How does this all feel with the end of the season and, and the moves that you now made? No, you want you to look at you, who you looking anyone, at? Anyone, anyone want to take that? Uh, I'll let Gar start it off. Uh, look, I mean, any season that ends with a loss to Portland isn't a good season and, you know, is, is not a, a total success. You know, going out in the first round of the playoffs is not what we envisioned, um, you know. Uh, but that said, I don't think it's a failure either. We feel like we have a foundation for next year and uh, having the best half season in MLS history once we got healthy, um, I think was uh, something that we'll, we can build upon for next season. What's going to be the, the key in building upon that? Uh, how are you going to prepare the players to not have the, the kind of start that they've had in the last couple of seasons? Um, I might yeah, have to do one. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll take that one um, because it, I think it relates directly to some of the reflection that I've had based on the season and how it ended. So two, two answers to that question. Number one, as a coaching staff, we've already begun to work on preseason for next season. Um, you know, if you, if, if you can recall, we, we brought in Damian Roden from, from Stoke in the EPL. And I would say that due to the political climate in this country, we had some challenges with his visa. But it, it, he wasn't there in all phases of, of, of that preseason. So this year, as a staff, we have made sure that we take care of all of the little details for this upcoming preseason, that our hotels, our opponents, our training, everything is dialed in. We're working already on our game model for next season to incorporate Jordan and, 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 and get that dialed in so that we as a coaching staff will be prepared. Second way I would answer that is, you know, 2018, I think, was an anomaly. I, I, I think there were some challenges that we faced and overcome. We overcame a lot of them. Uh, but, you know, you, you, you starting with Jordan's catastrophic emotional injury, you know, back in, in Santa Tecla. Uh, it, was a, it was a World Cup year. There, was, there, was, there were guys that were, you know, focused on the World Cup. Uh, we had other injuries. Ozzy Victor weren't right at the beginning of the year. Um, Kim Ki he went down with a calf problem. I think in that same game, Will Bruin got a concussion and forced us to play Clint as number nine, which was out of position. I mean, we were really strapped there for many, many months without our full squad. And so I think the preparation we're going to do, the knock on wood that we don't have the amount of injuries, the cohesion of bringing a, a, a very talented team back for next season is going to help us prepare for not having a slow start. Now it's pro sports, and you can say that every team is doing the exact same thing we are. We certainly uh, understand that this is a competitive business, but we feel very strongly, I feel very strongly, that this is a good squad, and that we will be able to continue the success we had of the <clears throat> from the last uh, part of this season. And through those, through those dark times at the beginning of the season, what is it that, that you learned the most about yourself and your relationship with management on how to prepare you for situations where you may encounter a catastrophic injuries or emotional feelings going through. Well, the, the management with the the relationship with management is good. I mean, there's there's no issues there. Uh, it, again, it's pro sports. I mean, Garth and I and Chris and Adrian. I mean, we all get along fine. I think there's cohesion within our group. Do we see players always the same? No, of course not. Uh, I actually like diverse opinions. That's actually good for the health of this organization. Um, at the end of the day, we try and make consensus decisions or as close to consensus as possible. But we understand that, again, there are certain parameters that we have to work in as far as players are concerned. I just can't look at him and say, okay, give me Messi or give me Suarez. or it, 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 That's unrealistic. He's got boundaries he has to work on. Chris has an enormous job of scouring the country, uh, the world, to find good players that fit for the Seattle Sounders. So as we work together, I so far think my two and a half years here has been pretty good. Well, Garth, that would be nice. Uh, <laughs> Garth, uh, um, obviously one of the decisions coming up to this end of the season was uh, about the amount of contract and uh, how that was going to be taken care of. Uh, how have you handled that? And uh, is there uh, possibilities that maybe at some point maybe you can, Ozzy could try to come back here? Uh, if, you know, being out of contract, if you could renegotiate or anything like 
Sure. Look, you know, I know there's been some some messages about what the rules are and what we can do. And what I would tell you we're focused on is more what we should do. Um, the good news is we've been through a situation like this in recent history. We went through this with Brad Evans last year. And um, free agency is a, a right for which the players fought very hard. I mean, this was a very contentious issue in the previous CBA. And, um, you know, we are determined, all of us are former players from, you know, at different times. And, um, you know, they fought very hard for this. And we want to respect that right. And, um, you know, we want our players in this situation to be able to explore the marketplace. And I that that feels equitable. It feels fair. These are guys in both Evans and, and Ozzie that, um, you know, literally spent a decade in service to this club. And, and, you know, it shouldn't be something where we monolithically impose, like, this is the number that we think and that's it. And um, so, so those conversations will be ongoing. Uh, I don't expect that process to wrap up overnight. Um, and that's okay. And, and that's, you know, those guys have earned that. Like, Ozzie's earned that. Um, and so we'll we'll explore that as we'll explore other situations. And you know, with, you know we're bringing back a lot of guys, but uh, as we've touched on last week, like some of those guys will say, I want a bigger role, so I'd rather play for a different team. And um, we'll work through those situations. And um, you know, that's 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 a normal off season. I mean, you know, that's that'll happen in the next couple of months. And you know, the one other thing I'll I'll add to Brian's answer uh, from before is just that you know we had really rock solid veteran guys come in and say they were tired at the end of our season and so if you ask how we're going to be better next year i think they're just can't stress enough how much that refresher that you know again do we want to lose to portland of course not do we want to lose to of course not do we want a long off season we don't but given the third year of this cycle uh, with a group that we have, I think it. I think it wore on us a little bit. If we're honest, I think that's one thing I would say upon reflection. Now that motivates us not to start slowly, right? Because that's part of the stress on our players. And um, but likewise, I don't think we're going to change our approach in the big picture. We're going to make uh, prudent decisions for the long term, and we believe we have a good foundation. And with a little bit more rest um, on and off the field, because a lot of it's mental. I think that sets us up for success going forward for next season. Were you prepared to bring Ozzy Alonso back as a starter? Is that any conversation that you had with him? Well, as Coach Spencer alluded to, I mean, we, we're going to work on all this stuff together. And, and, you know, ultimately, whether Ozzy starts or he doesn't, that's Coach Spencer's decision. That's not mine. Um, and we'll work together to build the roster. And, uh, you know, we say every year, like, we want every player back, right? But we operate in a salary cap world. And so you have to figure out what the value of each player is relative to each other and relative to the league. And, you know, that's the process that we go through every offseason. And, and so, um, you know, ultimately we'll collectively make that decision and, and uh, we'll have a plan A and a plan B and a plan C. And, again, we respect uh, the right of our veteran players to explore free agency and to, to check that out and try to find a fair and equitable outcome for everybody. But how important was it for you to get, uh, get Christian Oldan back in, into what you alluded to you feel is his natural position? Well, the way I, I – well, it, 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 it might be Christian's natural position, but at the end of the day, my responsibility, Jeff, is not to, you know, put Christian in his, you know, natural position. My job is to make sure that I put 11 players together on the field plus the rest of the guys on the roster into a co cohesive unit to win games. And so my decision to put Gustav and Ozzy there, yeah, you know, Christian's a team guy. He might have sacrificed a few things, but... You know, that's what I felt was best for the team at that moment. To your to your original question, is Ozzy a starter if he's here and that? That's That's got to be competition. That's got to be competition in preseason. You know, they all know the gig. Ozzy is a tremendously talented player. I can't think of many other players that, that have the drive and determination that he has shown over his course of time here. But that doesn't guarantee him the starting spot. He has to earn that. So if Christian's better than him, okay, that's fine. If, if Gustav's better or Jordi DeLem or someone that the coaching staff thinks is better, well, then we, that, that's, that's our job. So, you know, I, I think the questions are a little premature about who's going to start for next season because I don't think the team is settled yet. Certainly happy to give you my honest best guess. But until we get Jordan and Raul on the field at the same time, see what that looks like. Until we get Nico back, you know, there, there's a lot of things that we gotta we gotta work through. I'm reading between the lines uh, on the uh, Aussie thing. It sounds like 
it was your decision not to exercise a mechanism in the CBA, which could have somewhat hamstrung his ability to go out on the market. Is that a fair characterization of, of your position? Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to my original answer. For me, the decision is not about what we can do. It's about what we should do. The most important thing is how we treat our players. The most important thing is the broad concept of free agency, which is that we want the Sounders to be a desirable place for players to play in the long term. And part of that is treating people well. And it makes, you know, to speak for myself, because I'm not in the, the broader conversations at a league level, but for myself, to ask someone potentially to accept less money than they made before uh, and not be able to investigate if that's a fair market value or not. That seems unfair. Uh, and so we tried to do the thing that we thought was right, what we should do, as opposed to what we could do. Chris, have you been able to utilize some of the success that the franchise has had in the last few years as a tool to be able to spark those conversations with people as it pertains to coming to, to the state to play? Yeah, 100%. I think we've... Uh, you know, we have a video on our club that we share with people, and it's pretty impressive when you look at, and, and I think about just talking with Ozzy, think about what Ozzy's been part of since he came here. You know, it seems like a few years ago, we, you know, Brian talked to Mike at Charleston, and he was available, and we had a chance to get him, and he's won Open Cups, uh, Supporter Shield, he's been an all-star, best 11, so he's been fantastic for our club and been the heart of our club to where we are today. Um, but I think having players like that, having Obafemi Martins come here, having Gustav Svensson, current national team players playing in the World Cup, it just uh, makes our job easy when we're out there talking about our club. Um, so I think selling that, that dream of, of coming to MLS, uh, I think the level of the league, for the first time I've been out in South America and Europe, where I feel like the level and the quality of MLS is at the point where it's not a not a hard sell anymore. Um, and there's some big names coming, obviously, in the league. But the level is passing leagues that before I'd say, oh, we got a long way to go to catch them. Chris, you uh, certainly have been here for quite some time. You certainly have a relationship with Ozzy. Have you had any talks with him uh, about staying here, or how was that exit? interviewer had you talking to him at all? I haven't had a chance to talk to Ozzy. I, I was actually flying while we were playing Portland, so um, I you know, was listening to that on the radio. Um, so I haven't had a chance to talk to him. Um, you know, but you know, Ozzy and I have a good relationship. I think he's been fantastic for the club. And um, the one thing I w would like to go back is to Jeremiah's original question. The taste in our mouth of losing to Portland in the series was difficult, but let's not forget we won that last game and we lost in penalty kicks. And being a former player, that's a coin toss. Uh, we could be playing, you know, things can change. The best players in the world have missed penalties, Platini, you name it, Baggio, in big moments. So um, I don't want to, as hard as it is to go out, we won a championship in penalty kicks as well. So those things even out over time. It was reported when it was brought on brought in on loan that Brad Smith had an option to recall clause in his contract for January, I believe. Uh, Bournemouth has some woes at fullback injury wise right now. Can you talk about what the conversations are like right now, or what you expect his status to be for 2019? They have a right to recall. It's a two-day window in January. They will or they won't, and we'll go go accordingly. It's it's right at the beginning of the window, so we'd have time to react if they recall them and. Um, you know, I'm not going to try to get in Bournemouth's head as to what they're going to do or not do. They'll, they have that right, and they'll, they'll tell us what they want to do with it. Waylon Francis is under contract to us in 19. Uh, where do you see him uh, fitting, and you, Chris, as well? Where do you guys see him fitting in uh, to the team? From a contract standpoint, uh, as you said, he's under contract, and, you know, there are, as we said, too, that uh, – there's some players under contract that are going to have conversations with us and about what, what where they want to be net going forward and what role they want to have. And this is, this is I think, a bigger point, Nico, you touch on that. I'm, I'm happy you raise it because these are all conversations. So, like, we, we talked a lot about Ozzy, right? But the free agency thing, the great thing about that is it's up to Ozzy. Like, he's free. He gets to the side now. That's a, that's a right that they've fought for. And uh, even for the guys that, uh, like Waylon, who maybe aren't free agents, like, these guys are veteran guys. We're going to sit down with them and say, we, we, we have sat down with them, and we've said, hey, what do you want? It's, and it's 
you know, I think an important part of building a team is having guys who want to be here and guys who want to be a part of the long-term project and you see a role. And, and, and so it's, it's just not as simple as, hey, we're going to see it now and I'll let Coach Spencer talk to uh, this a little bit more. But it, it, it just, there are going to be some things in process. And, and in a salary capped world, it's a jigsaw puzzle. And you, if one chip goes out, you got to fill it. It's not a chip for chip kind of thing. It, it, they're usually dominoes and you got to build the team a different way in that case. So I just think you're going to see some moving pieces. Yeah, we got a solid foundation, but that doesn't mean we're standing pat. doesn't mean we're not looking to get better. Um, you know, it just means that uh, we're in the early stages here and, and we're looking at things. And honestly, the trade market for MLS, it's not going to get going until after the season's over, until after MLS Cup. So um, we're in a, a little bit of a holding pattern on, on a couple of these situations. Do you have a medical update on Chai? Uh, I, I'll get to that. Let me just fin finalize a point with Whalen because Whalen, look, maybe it didn't work out completely for Whalen, okay? We brought him in here to fight for a position with Nuhu, you know, how that all manifested itself throughout the course of the season. What I will say and what Garth touched upon, and I'll add my coach's side to it, is managing people. Because Whalen's a good person. When he came on late in the season, a couple games, a couple tough situations, the kid performed well. You know, he does have that experience. Was he the right fit for our franchise? Maybe, maybe not. Okay? But if he knows that there's two other guys at left back and I pushed him up a line or he doesn't feel like he you know, finds a, can find a place on the squad, then we have that conversation. We talk about it. And out of respect to what Waylon did do for us, because he did play some important games, um, we would say, okay, what do you want to do? And we have that conversation. So managing the players on the soccer side is important as well because no manager, no coach wants to have a guy who's unhappy or doesn't think he has a chance to play. That just, that would be silly. Uh, update on Chad medically uh, is that he's doing better. And, uh, you know, he will be fine. There's no complications from the surgery, anything like that. He should be available for the start of preseason. Where do you think you're at in terms of the process of more uh, homegrown academy players getting to the first team? And do you think 2019 could be a year where a few more of those faces that pop up could be the first team now? Potentially. Uh, and I, I don't want to be careful because I. I, I what I would say is we're, we're entering phase two, right? We, we feel like we've successfully uh, gotten through phase one where we've built the amount of talent in the academy. We won a national title. We put ourselves in a position where we have enough good players to talk about things like this. Phase two is to improve the USL team and to try to make them competitive on a, on a game in, game out basis, compete for the playoffs. Phase three is have the kids make impactful contributions to the first team. And I think, you know, if you just look at the ages of the kids we're signing, that's a, a pretty rational approach. Will we sign some of these kids to a contract with the first team? That's possible, yes. And, and we're going to take, Coach Metzger's been really open about young players. We're going to take a bunch of them to preseason, uh, and we're going to see how they do. And certainly, if, you know, as, with, as he talked about, you know, there's position battles everywhere, and these kids are going to be part of that. And if they go in and they excel and they do well, like absolutely our door is open to signing them now. But I would tell you is even if we sign them, do I anticipate that they're going to play big minutes for the first team right away? I mean, again, if they're good enough, sure, that's great. But the plan is, you know, potentially to sign them but still play them for S2 in the event that somebody breaks through uh, early in the season. And the great thing is, is we have enough good young players now that we don't have to sit here and pick, well, I want that one or I want that one. We have enough. Well, they'll come in and they'll compete and we'll have a good group and it'll make preseason better and it'll raise the level of competition for everybody and then we'll make the right decisions for the group. Chris, there are two, 22 players right now. In, uh, in terms of looking for players, do you have any priority on, on, on positions? Like, are you guys looking for a midfielder, defender, or forward? To complete the, the roster, what is your priority? Yeah, Felipe, we're looking at uh, all three lines, defense, midfield, attack. I mean, we have uh, two windows. Uh, that we may spread those out, the signings for those positions, but right now we're looking at all three lines. Um, we've been to three different continents scouting uh, between our scouting group. Uh, it's been a busy, busy last few months of travel and, and getting the group together and talking about players. And um, now we get into a process of trying to narrow down our targets and whether that plays out for this window in January or, or the summer window, um, we'll see how that plays out. Some of that goes into negotiating and, and timing. You have one DP spot. Uh, 
does it does it change anything the fact that you have two DPs already on offensive or attacking positions? You maybe you want to balance that somewhere else on the field? We talk about it many times in, in MLS uh, teams will spend their money on the attacking positions because that's where you can have uh, an impact in winning games. But um, I, I think we discuss how we can build the team and the key positions around that. Um, and those are ongoing every day. Felix Chang had a bit of a hard luck 2018 with his form and a herniated disc. Do you expect that he'll be back in Tacoma next year or, or is that kind of up in the air at this point in time? As of now, I don't think I don't expect Felix to come back with us. Um, what's Trey Muse's uh, relationship with the organization at this point? Sorry, I'm scrubbing the first two sarcastic <laughs> answers I had there. Um, <coughs> the uh, yeah, good. Uh, we've we've been in touch with him regularly. He's a great kid. Uh, obviously, came up through the academy, but a big part. I think he's widely considered the. Uh, the, the best goalkeeper in college, uh, definitely a player in, which, in whom we have an interest. Uh, and, you know, we are not legally able to approach him while the college season is ongoing. So um, we've been very cautious to follow the rules and, and not do anything to jeopardize him. But he's having a great season. Indiana's having a great season. Uh, Coach Yeagley and I uh, played together on the Midwest Regional team in the late 80s. So uh, we have some uh, ties and connection there. And, uh, we talk, so um, you know he's he's definitely a guy we have our eye on. Hey, Chris, he's a homegrown player eligible. He's yes, he is. Yep. Hey, Chris, going back to, to, to like, but going back to your uh, comment about how in MLS most of the teams are going to be, you go in and they bring in attacking players. What does that attacking player look like, and has it changed in the last three years or four years? Um, that the attacking players changed in that uh, more money has come into the league, so we are able to get a higher caliber caliber player. Um, but every team defines it differently. What our needs are different than what other teams have. Um, you know, I think with Brian, it's key, it's chemistry, it's uh, believing in the club, being part of the club, um, the character of the player. Um, I mean, you look at Ladero as an example. He's a fantastic pro and his work rate is contagious, and he, he gives everything for the club, and I think that's what you want in a designated player. Is it a, a certain type of attacking player? Big, physical, able to go from end line to end line, side to sideline, has that changed in the physicality? No, I, I mean, the way we look at it is how they're gonna combine with the players we have. How is that gonna bring Jordan's strengths out, or Ra Raul's strengths out? So how are the, we try and project how they're going to interact with our players, which is very hard to do. But that's, uh, I think, how we've had success building teams, is try and get a guy who will fit into our game plan. Maas, can I help answer that? Please. OK, so what I'm hearing from your question <clears throat> is that are we looking for a specific type? Is Chris charged with looking for a back to goal number nine? No, I, we don't say that. Chris has a very good eye for talent. I mean, if you look at our forwards recently, over the, you know, we had Nelson, we had Oba, we had Clint, we had Jordan, we added Raul. All of those five guys that I just mentioned are different. They're all, they all, all have different characteristics. Chris touched on it. My biggest thing when I, when I, when I, when I convent to these guys and say, this, look, this is what I want, one of the common threads is always about a person who has good integrity that cares about being a good pro, that cares about this club, that cares about winning. They have certain character traits that I feel are important for the makeup of the squad. Chris's professional view, Gar's professional view, all the scouts about can he do this? Is he a guy that runs off the back shoulder? Is he a back to goal guy? Some of those nuances, we have conversations about that all the time. But we're not specific to say, okay, for the Seattle Sounders, we're always going to have, you know, th this type of player. I think there's a little bit nu more nuance to it. I just think the common thread is just what they view our club as. Coach, about Rui Diaz, his stats at the end of the year were pretty mind-boggling, unbelievable performances. One, is there anything that surprised you about him? And two, are you just licking your, licking your lips about next year and maybe combinations working with them for, for 34 games or? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the thing that surprised me was that 
the kid wanted to defend a little bit more than what we saw in film. <clears throat> I mean, I remember games, you know, that he'd chase guys back all the way back into our defensive half of the field. That's the kind of commitment that we want from players, the guy that has integrity that would do little things to help the team win. So on that one, those guys get great marks. His goal scoring prowess, <clears throat> how he fits with Jordan, again, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm salivating, it, it's going to be great, but we have to actually get them on the field together to see what he can do uh, with Jordan. He's already shown a good relationship with Nico, so we hope that continues. You know, the only, the only reality check that I would say is that, look, Nico came in, in 2016 and lit the world on fire. And then teams get more film and, you know, you got to watch a little bit more. So are some teams going to now have a little bit of information on Raul, how to slow him down, how to stop him, where he likes to get the ball? Sure. And we'll have to address that. And that's one of the things that makes me feel confident about our squad is that, okay, so teams might do that. They might look at Raul and say, okay, this is how we can slow this guy down. But then all of a sudden you've got Jordan Morris over here. And then you've got, you know, Nico doing his thing. And you've got Victor who came on strong. And then you get the outside backs that are involved in the attack. So, yeah, I get pretty fired up about that. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see. Brian, is there any, any change in your coaching staff? No changes in my coaching staff, no. Uh, how do you, uh, just for any of you, uh, how, do you how do you handle um, looking into the future with a guy like Victor that was so, so great when he was healthy <coughs> and so important to the team, but then there's that aspect of maybe coming off a hard time being on the field? Uh, you know, I think. We, we have uh, medical and performance data on all of our guys, and we try to make objective decisions about uh, those guys. There's, there is no crystal ball. There's no zero risk. And uh, for us, we felt like once Victor got right, he stayed right. Um, and that's part of the, from our perspective, part of the transition of the performance staff as well. Um, you know, once we got Damien up and running and completely uh, entrenched in, in culturally as well as day-to-day -day in what we're doing, um, felt like we got some pretty good outcomes. Uh, and you know, again, Dave Tenney was awesome. Damien's awesome. Slightly different methodologies. You're going to have some hiccups, some transitions in between. That's why I don't want to change a performance coach every year. Um, but likewise, that's why we think we have a really good foundation going forward. So we have reason to think that uh, Victor, under this new uh, <coughs> regimen, uh, will succeed. And Nico, when we, when we go and scout players, that's, that's some of the things we look into, the durability. Uh, their injury history. And, and you said that have scouted him, bringing him, or, you know, one of, the, one of the first reasons scouting, what do you think he's been, and how well has he worked out in your understanding? Yeah, I think when Victor's on the field and playing, he's fantastic. He's, he's skillful, he can break teams down. Um, he's done everything we thought he'd do, um, coming from a, a lower level La Liga team to being on a, you know, a strong team in MLS. I think all his uh, positive attributes are coming out for us. What kind of uh, feedback have you gotten, or the staff, how, what kind of feedback have you all gotten from uh, from Damon in terms of uh, the length of the season and how how that will force him to adapt to some of the things that he does and did before and how he needs to reapply that to the American game? You, you're talking about Damien. Yeah, the, the I think there was a learning curve there. Yeah. I mean, he's used to working at the EPL. Uh, uh, I'm trying to recall, remember some of the, the terms he always uses, um, you know, recovery, uh, eating, uh, their off-season work, their work they do after, after we blow the final whistle as coaches. You know, there's a lot of recovery involved. Uh, you know, he started a program where all of the players, and we have some young players there that need help. Even some of the senior guys that, that might want to fudge a little bit on an In-N-Out burger or something. I mean, eating, nutrition, all of those things, he's, he's come and helped us try and raise the level of what we do here in the lunchroom, what they do. They have breakfast available to them, a hot breakfast available if they want. You know, a lot of the guys come in and take advantage of all those things. The on-field stuff. You know, again, UPL is, you know, a little higher than us. So, yeah, he had to make some adjustments on how to train. The size of our country compared to, you know, the United Kingdom. 
it's 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 much much larger country some of the travel and some of the things we did some of the creative ways we solved that you know after games we'd have the hotel we we're staying at keep the pool open and so there'd be evenings where after a tough game we'd have our team meal and they'd jump right into the pool do a, a partial regen that evening which is something that that was new so new ideas uh, different style than Dave um, but you know we're, we're again we're, we're excited he's here and I think it was a good uh, starting point for us to, to look at our overall sports science staff and how we do things. Some reports have surfaced uh, that there may be a potential change to the schedule next year. Uh, I want to get your comments obviously it hasn't been confirmed yet uh, but I was wondering what each of you thought about the impact uh, having this decision day moved up and the playoffs in a condensed timeline, um, as well as additional big week games and how that would impact uh, the players during the season. And then the potential uh, impact of having a, a pretty long break from the end of MLS Cup to the start of the season. I, I, I sit on that CSO committee um, that, and we talk, we've talked, we talk about lots of things and schedule is a topic that comes up every year in some form or fashion. And um, I think uh, as an attorney, uh, and, uh, speaking to another attorney, uh, you, you recognize that it'd be irresponsible for me to speculate on a policy that uh, has not been uh, passed or approved. So um, it's fun to write about and, and uh, you did some good reporting on it and, and uh, uh, you know, don't mean to be in any way dismissive of that. Just I think it would be equally irresponsible of us to try to comment on things that uh, are not yet reality. And um, you know, if that comes to pass, we'll be happy to address those questions at that time. Jordan said that he was done with his rehab today, which I assume means he's moving into the next stage. Um, but can you elaborate on what that might mean that he's done with his rehab? I don't know if he's ever going to be done with his rehab. He'll have to keep rehabbing throughout his career because that's part of the new protocol. You might not call it rehab. You might call it just training. Um, I'd have to go ask him what he meant by that. <laughs> Does he think he could have played this weekend? I mean, we had high hopes for franchise in Jordan. Um, he has a strict protocol, um, you know, from his doctors. Uh, Mandelbaum, who did the surgery, is in charge of all that. Uh, Chris, Damien, all the staff down there do a great job of getting the players and keeping the players healthy. Uh, so if he says he's done, that might be a little bit premature. Um, I'll have to ask a couple of more pointed questions. But the kid's obviously anxious to play. He's had a long year. He saw the success of the team in the second half of the season, and we'd had many conversations where he was itching to play. Uh, just once again, open question here. Uh, now that you guys are going to have more time than you guys have had in the last two years for preseason and resting or, or things like that to maybe think about how you're going to approach that, have you thought about maybe doing any changes on where you train or who you go against, you know, or different leagues, anything of that? Well, our preseason will be two phases again, one a, more of a conditioning phase, uh, then certainly a second phase, which will include uh, games against MLS competition. Um, we're working on a couple of friendlies for that first phase, but nothing that I can talk about because nothing's set in stone. Um, but no, I mean, just it's, it's the smaller tweaks of how we train, why we train that way, Education, education meaning we're going to educate the players on what it takes to be an athlete that plays at their highest level. And then, you know, just making sure we cross all the T's and dot all the I's because we want to make sure that we use this off season wisely to do some reflection, to figure out what we did as a staff, what we can do better as a staff to help the players have the tools to be successful. And Nico, much of our preseason preparation starts in July of August, the, the summer before, just trying to secure games, places. The teams are all trying to go to similar places, and you want to get the best training field and best hotels and make sure we're in a good place. Regarding free agency, um, is that something you expect to be in the mix for? And what's your sense of this year's class as it stands? As I say, I don't, I'm not aware that we have a final free agent list, so it's really hard for me to comment on that right now. I mean, again, we're looking to get better through all phases, and, um, you know, we're going to have a first phase probably of evaluating what happens with our players and then a second of seeing where we need to tweak based on what happens with our guys. 
Speaking of evaluating your players, uh, Aaron Kovar is out of contract. What's his status? The team is looking to bring him back. Or have you had those discussions with, with him? Does LAFC have some option to bring him in full time? LFC had an option to acquire him full time. Uh, that that didn't happen, uh, and Aaron is exploring what he wants to do right now with the next phase of his career. So those uh, conversations are ongoing, um, and and I'll I'll leave it to Aaron to to uh, let everybody know what he wants to, as to what his uh, his next steps will be. Anything else, guys? Yeah, I got one. Um, what are y'all thankful for? Just given it's that time of the year. And, uh, what do you guys I'm thankful that uh, I get to spend time with my family and uh, to be back here in Seattle and, and around my parents and brothers and, and my family. Uh, I'm thankful to work with such a talented, hardworking staff that in, and uh, with the support of a fan base that's given me four more years. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it was definitely a source of uh, real gratitude that uh, you know we got such overwhelming support for the direction of the club and, and the vote. I think it's a it's a great thing and it's a it's a real confidence booster and an affirmation of how we've done things going forward. And um, that's something that we're we're very thankful for. And of course, uh, I got three little boys at home, so I'm pretty happy that they're all uh, walking and talking and uh, smiling and playing and all those good things as well. I'm thankful I only had to pay him twenty bucks to say that. <laughs> No, I'm th look. I, I'm thankful to to have a job in a in a tremendous organization. I mean, this I, I take a lot of pride in the work that we do. I think we do a lot of really really good things. There's certainly the things that we can always get better at. We're never just satisfied just to be who we are. We're always trying to search for ways to get better. But I have a lot of pride in the club, and 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 you know, working with a talented group of individuals here at Starfire, down in Pioneer Square. I mean, Bart Wiley, some of those people down there, Aaron Vagley, all of those people, Taylor Graham, all of the people that help us because they have to do the business side of things. It might not get all the accolades, but we need the fans in the building. So they help us in that sense. We get fans in the building, the atmosphere is great. You guys witnessed the atmosphere there that last game. That was tremendous. On a week's notice, we filled the house, uh, helped the team win. So those guys, I'm thankful for, for working with a talented bunch of uh, people. And then the players. I, w I always come back to the players. I'm very thankful for the effort and work that they've put in, in what is an arduous and long season. And what has been, you could, you could argue this, but one of the most challenging seasons in this franchise history. Because we really dug ourselves a deep pit. And they persevered, they never quit, they never stopped working. And I think that's all testament to them and their commitment to this club. So that's what I'm thankful for. Gordon, were you surprised that Coach Spencer wasn't on the list of coaches of the year because of what he just described and the roller coaster that was? Uh, look, I, I'm I, I'm surprised oh, no. that, that absolutely. I mean, our our staff deserves a lot of credit, as as do our players, as as he mentioned. And uh, you know, look, we don't control the votes and the voting. And I'll I'll, I'll because I'm who I am, I'll point out that there are guys that lose their jobs who win coach of the year in sports every year. So, um, you know, and, and in this case, the guy who won is leaving uh, Atlanta. So, you know, I, I don't look at that as a measure of who the best coach is, just as I don't look at the, the goalkeeper of the year as necessarily the measure of who I thought had the best goalkeeping season or defender as who had the best defensive season, yada, yada, yada. Those are things that are subjective and decided by, you know, by you guys and um, your expert, you know, in different factions. I mean, our players, player votes, are they the best informed about the 23 coaches that they didn't play for that year? It's, it's kind of a tricky question, right? I mean, it's, they, I, no doubt they judge that with best intentions, but um, there may not be an overall expert opinion. And so I would separate those things from each other a bit, but Coach Smetch has been great. He continues to be great. Uh, we've had a ton of success together, he and I, uh, uh, and certainly 